Is it time for a review? If you believe it is time for a review, I can certainly help you with that. Just let me know what specific aspects you would like to review or discuss. Let's begin. Welcome to my 72 hours on this beautiful bad boy. Now, the R1 has seen a lot of hype. They've sold 100,000 units so far. Uh, we even did some sponsored content on this device and just put it out there, this video is not sponsored. This is just a clear look at what this device is for me after 72 hours in terms of use. Now, you can do a lot of things with the Rabbit R1 uh, in terms of conversational actions with your assistant here. So for instance, I can go, how do you say, it's been a great day in French. Seafood une excellente journée is the translation of it's been a great day in French. Okay, so you can do stuff like that. You can also check the weather. And by the way, I don't speak any French. So if you're a French speaker, hopefully that is as correct enough as possible. But those are things that you can do on your smartphone. And you're wondering, what is the Rabbit R1 and why should I care? Now, the first thing is that this is one of many AI assistant devices that are out on the market or are these coming to the market. We've seen the Humane Pin, which we haven't covered on the channel, uh, but this comes in at a price point of $199, making it really affordable for that entry level AI assistant that people will gravitate to, which kind of give us, of course, those massive sales of 100,000 units. Now, design-wise, the hardware is designed by Teenage Engineering, and it's got this nice, small uh, touchscreen, which you can't use unless you're using the keyboard, which is a bit funky. You've got a scroll wheel, and you've got a vision camera that is constantly on a down position, aka locked. But when you go ahead and you double tap, that brings the camera, and you'll see my face. And I can switch it to the other side, and I can rotate, but you get the idea. Now, that's pretty much everything in the hardware in terms of what you can interact with. The button on the side is the only button on this device, and then you do have speakers at the back. Now, the scroll wheel is nice, but it's very interesting in terms of use case, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. You also have a USB port for charging and a SIM card tray. So if you have a SIM card, you can use this on the go. So the Rabbit R1 is, it's a lot of fun and also frustrating at the same time. Uh, there are things that work well and there are things that don't, but it does try hard to do a good job at creating a close enough experience that gives you an idea of what this device is for. So one of the things that Rabbit talks about is the fact that they have uh, the ability to connect to a couple of applications. Right now there are four. The CEO at the press conference did state that there will be more applications in the future, um, and those are coming with a summer update. Now, those four applications we have right now are Uber, uh, there's also DoorDash, there is Midjourney, and finally, there's Spotify. I can show you some of those quickly. Now, hopefully, I don't get flagged for this though, but let's go ahead and check out Spotify by saying, play the Afrobeats playlist. So it's playing, but what's funny is Afrobeat, and that is Michael Jackson bad right there. So you kind of get issues like that. Um, and that's something that the CEO has said that they've used a generative UI, which can generate issues like this. But the player does work. Spotify actually is one of the apps that works pretty well in terms of picking up your playlists, um, uh, playing just specific songs. I've had very little issues with just playing the songs I want to. The drawback on this is that, you know, to play and pause is with one button and you can't necessarily increase the volume. The only way to do that is to shake to go into the settings. And then you have a volume option, Bluetooth and things like that in there. 
So that's something that Rabbit needs to think about because I like the very minimalistic idea of just one button, but honestly, you need buttons for more than just one thing. Now, another one is Uber. I can call an Uber from here to a location, but the thing you have to note is you have to be very specific about where you're going to. So I go, I'm running into a problem there. I got to scroll. There we go. I got to scroll out of this into the home screen. The UI needs some work. You can see me just trying to record this and I, I could make it pretty and cut it off, but honestly, you got to see what the experience is. So I'm now back in the home screen. I can scroll back to the song and then I'm scroll forward again. I'm here. I'm going to order an Uber. Order an Uber from work to home. So it will warn you that there are some limitations to it. It might be slower or it might not work. So I kind of like that at least. And in terms of actually getting an Uber, it's been pretty functional all the way. And so it's already here. Now with Uber, you have a couple of steps while you do that. It's confirming that is work. So it says work. I can either press and hold to change the location or the address, but I'm just going to scroll down and confirm. Then it says home. So I want to go home. I can either do the same thing, either change the location or confirm. Scroll down, continue. And then finding rides. Now it's going to show you my options. Uber X, $16. Man, it's getting expensive. Excel, black, that's it. Three options. And you're going to notice most of the time you're going to get three options from this device. It's pretty much standard. Now here's the kicker with Uber. Once I go ahead and select this, this is the last screen I will ever see. I'm not going to do it now. Actually, I will. I can cancel it on my phone. I pay $16.99. I have to put a pin. Here's another thing that you're going to see a lot is that you, I wish I had a fingerprint sensor. I don't have to actually put in a pin anymore. Granted, I don't increase the cost, but maybe in, in the slightly pro model, this would have made it easier. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel and head back the process. But once you order an Uber, you're not giving an indication of what the vehicle is or the license plate. So again, those are things that have to be fixed. Now, we also have things like mid-journey. Mid-journey allows you to create, of course, unique AI-generated images. And it does work well, but it's rather slow. So I'm going to do this and we'll get back to mid-journey in a second. Create an image of Master Chief fighting Superman in a spaceship heading to Neptune. Generating now. This will take a bit. So with mid-journey though, the caveat here is depends on what service you're paying for. I'm paying for a basic service. so that also would take a longer amount of time. So that's not necessarily on the AI, it's just what you're paying for. Um, and with this device though, you can do a lot of things with it, but you also can't do a lot of things as well. So I'm gonna just kind of set this down for a second here and talk about some of the things that I liked from what uh, they showcased at uh, the press event for the launch. Uh, some of the applications talking about uh, connectivity with smart home, which I think is really big. Um, I have a smart home and I'm going to be setting up a spot over here in the office where we can showcase and do something different, but it's very hard. It's very difficult and it's still going. So I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, my bad. Here we go. So we have images here. So that's actually pretty good. Um, I don't know if that's Neptune in the background, but they are fighting in the spaceship. Another one here again, another one another one. So this is pretty cool. That looks like a planet. Maybe not Neptune, but still pretty solid. But there's one more program or one more app it does have here that we can use, and that is DoorDash. So DoorDash has the longest and slowest operation here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and try and order some mac and cheese. So I'm hungry for some mac and cheese. to load on rabbit OS and may not be available in all regions. So it's cool that they actually recognized that I'm hungry for, door, for um, mac and cheese and then went to go ahead and search for that. But since it's going to take a while, 
Let's head over to the kitchen to find something to eat. We found a place. It says Macology. Um, Macology. And that's it. It's two locations. There are more than two locations around here. So let's look at something in the kitchen. We've got some pasta sauce. We have the vision functionality. You double tap to access vision. The camera spun around. So let's see. What can I make with this? Taking a look now. The app may be under maintenance, or you may need to provide more context. Apologies for any inconvenience. This worked 20 minutes ago. Yes. So you get the idea. You're going to run into things like this. Earlier in the day, I could use the vision functionality well. It, it worked well. It was fine. We looked at Hayato's watch. He has an Omega watch. He couldn't figure out I had a, a Seco. He said it was a Timex. You know, uh, those are the kind of things that do happen. But I'm going to try it again. I feel like, I feel like there's hope. I feel like there's hope. What is this? watch. The image shows a silver-colored wristwatch with a black dial and an analog display with hands and numbers. The watch appears to be on the user's wrist in front of a brick wall back. What brand of watch is this? Taking a look now. The brand of watch shown in the image is Seiko. You can clearly see... Finally. Whew. Okay, but you get the idea here, right? Um... There are things this device can do well, and there are things the device just can't do well at the time. Now you're going to ask a couple other things. What about uh, some of the other functionalities you built in? So when you shake, you go into the settings. And let's take a closer look at what we have here in the settings. You have your brightness settings, and here's a feature that I do not like. So you go into the settings, you tap the button. No, you hold the button. And you're thinking, oh, how do I increase this? Do I? No, 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 no. You got to use the scroll wheel at the same time. I know Teenage Engineering makes some really cool stuff, but seriously, that's dumb. That does not make any sense. That being said, you go into the volume rocker. You have to do the same thing for volume, for your media, your settings. So it's a bit cumbersome using some of those features, which can be changed. It's a software thing where you can actually change that, I'm sure. Bluetooth, you can connect Bluetooth headphones to this. Network between cellular and, of course, your Wi-Fi. Um, and then you've got some other things like apply and compa compliance. Now, in terms of battery life, we're looking at roughly about four hours. Um, I've had some really serious battery drains of this device, um, especially in its idle mode. So it's my backpack where I leave it on the table. I start at 100% in about two hours. Or so it gets down to about 70, 70%. So there's a lot of idle drain off the device, which Hopefully it's something they can fix. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I like this device. I like the price point of the device. I like what it brings to the table. Is this half-baked? Yes. And in the words of the CEO, a question that Michael Fisher brought up was, why are you launching now when not everything is complete? Uh, whether it's the app functionality, whether it's even the, the UI itself. The answer from the CEO was simply this. He said, we are a small team. Yes, we admit that certain things aren't fully baked out, but in terms of our LMA, which is the large action model they have, it needs to be trained. So the 100,000 people who bought it, including myself, need to be trained, need to train the AI to actually do a better job. And I like that transparency. Whether it's right or not, that's a different case entirely. Whether you should be a test subject, well, that's your choice because you bought it. And I like the fact that he was clear from the very beginning that this is not going to replace your smartphone. It's not going to replace his iPhone. It's not going to replace my Samsung Galaxy. This should be a complement. This should be able to do different things. Some of the things he showcased was he being able to scan something, uh, a document on, on the table, and then it actually emailed it over, you know, and changed the, uh, the, the layout and presentation. Uh, being able to teach you to do specific things for you, like say, uh, order something from a specific website at a specific time, um, you know, send email or messages to your parents at different times just because you always forget and you never call your parents. Those kind of things. You get the idea. 
Now, the big question. That question is simply, with everything I can do with this, can't I just do it on this? And the answer is yes and no. And the reason I say no is because if this was on your phone from a third party app, you wouldn't use it. You wouldn't pay the fee for what it would be, but it's $20 a month. You will probably wait for Google or Apple or Microsoft or somebody like that to make it they would use. And I think that it's really cool to see a smaller company try and do something different. And they've also said this very clear from the beginning that having this as an app within the app store, they are afraid of it being stolen. Yes, you're gonna to have to play by the rules of Google and of course Apple, which means they have to see what that app is about. They might be able to read into their technology, understand how it works, reverse engineer it, and boom, they're done, they're out of business. So I get that aspect, but I appreciate the fact that it's only $199. Now, will this get better? I hope so. I think it has the capability of getting better. I think it is rough around the edges, it's really rough around the edges. And sometimes it gives you a ray of sunshine. It's like looking outdoors and you're saying, wow, look at that, it is sunny, it is nice. So all I'm saying here is this, is that I have more faith in this device because of where the company started from and what they said about it and what it brings to the table. Even though it has its issues and glitches, it still is performing close enough to what they actually stated it will be. And I think that's a very good start. It's going to be a rough road with AI. Some will be faster than others. Some of us, of course, want chat GPT in a capsule like this that we can use. And maybe that's what we'll get, or maybe we'll get something different. I don't know. But my first 72 hours, um, it's been a journey, and I'm still going to take that journey with the Robert R1. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to say, Rabbit, say goodbye to our friends. <laughs>